We end here tonight with a sleeping giant, an ancient super volcano beneath Yellowstone National Park. Just the potential damage it would cause if it erupted, not an impending threat of an eruption. Imagine a volcanic eruption so massive that it could change the world as we know it. NASA has just issued a chilling warning about the potential eruption of the world's largest caldera. What does this mean for us? And are we prepared for the consequences? In an unprecedented announcement, NASA has issued a warning about the potential eruption of the world's largest caldera, the Apalaki Caldera. While many have long believed that the Yellowstone Caldera in the United States holds the title for the largest caldera, recent discoveries have revealed that the Apalaki Caldera, located underwater in the Philippine Sea, is significantly larger. This revelation has profound implications for our understanding of volcanic activity and the potential risks we face. In this video, we will explore what a caldera is, the specifics of NASA's warning regarding the Apalaki caldera, the potential impacts of an eruption, and the measures that can be taken to prepare for this possible catastrophe. What is a caldera? A caldera is a large volcanic crater formed by the collapse of a volcano into itself, creating a massive, basin-like depression. This collapse typically occurs following the emptying of the magma chamber beneath the volcano, often during an explosive volcanic eruption. Calderas are among the most powerful and destructive geological features on Earth. The Apalaki caldera, which means giant lord in Filipino, dwarfs the Yellowstone caldera. Located on the Benham Rise, also known as the Philippine Rise, the Apalaki Caldera measures approximately 150 kilometers, 93 miles, in diameter, making it the largest known caldera on Earth. The structure of the caldera includes a large central depression surrounded by a ring of elevated terrain. This ring structure is typical of calderas formed by massive volcanic eruptions that cause the ground to collapse inward. The caldera was formed by a series of colossal volcanic eruptions, the exact timeline of which remains the subject of ongoing research. These eruptions emptied the magma chamber beneath the volcano, causing the ground above to collapse and create the massive, basin-like depression that we now identify as the Apalaki caldera. The region around the Apalaki caldera is geologically active, with frequent seismic events and underwater volcanic activity. The Apalaki caldera was discovered relatively recently during marine geological surveys of the Benham Rise. Researchers using advanced mapping technologies, such as multi-beam sonar and satellite imagery, identified the caldera's distinctive circular structure and enormous size. The discovery has significantly altered our understanding of volcanic activity in the Philippine Sea and highlighted the need for further exploration and monitoring of underwater geological features. NASA's Warning NASA's recent warning about the Apalaki caldera is based on a series of alarming signs detected by satellites and underwater sensors. These signs include increased seismic activity, underwater volcanic gas emissions, and changes in the seafloor's topography. These indicators suggest that the magma chamber beneath Apalaki is becoming increasingly active, raising concerns about a possible eruption. The seismic activity detected near the Apalaki caldera has been particularly concerning. An uptick in the number and intensity of underwater earthquakes indicates that magma is moving and accumulating beneath the seafloor. Additionally, changes in the composition and temperature of gases emitted from the caldera suggest that the magma is heating up and releasing more volatile compounds. So, what if the Apalaki caldera erupts? Let's find out. An underwater eruption of the Apalaki caldera would likely involve a massive displacement of seawater. The rapid movement of magma and subsequent collapse of the caldera floor could generate a powerful tsunami. Such a tsunami could travel across the Pacific Ocean, impacting coastal regions thousands of kilometers away. A large earthquake in the area could cause an eruption by disrupting the magma chamber beneath Apalaki. Magma Chamber Dynamics 
The constant injection of fresh magma into the chamber from deeper inside the Earth's mantle raises pressure. If the magma influx rate exceeds the outflow rate, pressure will increase. Magma contains dissolved gases such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, and sulfur dioxide. As magma rises, the pressure falls, forcing these gases to exsolve and expand, raising the magma chamber's internal pressure. When the pressure in the magma chamber surpasses the strength of the surrounding rock, the rock can fracture. These fissures can allow magma to travel to the surface, perhaps resulting in an explosion. Water-Magma Interaction The Apalaki caldera's underwater location allows for extensive interaction between water and magma. When seawater comes in touch with magma, it can cause explosive volcanic activity. These eruptions occur when water and magma interact, resulting in fast water evaporation and explosive magma fragmentation. This sort of eruption can be quite violent and is typical in underwater volcanic settings. Hydrothermal vents and hot springs within the caldera may indicate the existence of active magma. Changes in hydrothermal activity, such as higher temperatures or gas emissions, can indicate an imminent eruption. Earthquake swarms. Clusters of minor to moderate earthquakes, known as earthquake swarms, can precede volcanic eruptions. These swarms represent magma movement within the crust and have the potential to undermine the caldera structure. Volcanic tremors, which are continuous low-frequency seismic waves, can indicate magma flow. An increase in tremor activity may indicate that magma is ascending to the surface. Human activity While less common, human activities such as deep-sea drilling, geothermal energy extraction, or explosive detonation have the potential to disrupt the magma chamber or the caldera's structural stability. So, what type of caldera is the Apalaki caldera? Calderas are classified into various categories, each with its own unique features and development procedures. Apalaki is classified as a submarine caldera. Submarine calderas exist underwater, usually along mid-ocean ridges or volcanic arcs. These calderas can be formed by explosive eruptions or the collapse of underwater volcanoes. Another example is the Kikai caldera in southern Kyushu, Japan. It originated approximately 7,300 years ago during a major eruption. The caldera is characterized by active hydrothermal vents and ongoing volcanic activity. Crater Lake Calderas Crater Lake calderas arise when a volcano erupts explosively, ejecting massive amounts of magma and leaving a void. The overlaying rock collapses into the vacuum, leaving a depression. This depression frequently fills with water, resulting in a crater lake, typically round in shape. A lake has formed after being filled with water, frequently has steep walls and can be extremely deep. Crater Lake in Oregon, USA, is a classic example of a crater lake caldera. It developed approximately 7,700 years ago when Mount Mazama erupted explosively. The caldera is filled with water, becoming the United States' deepest lake at around 594 meters, 1,949 ft deep. Resurgent calderas. Resurgent calderas emerge as a result of repeated eruptions and collapse. Following an initial eruption and collapse, the caldera floor may rise or resurge when magma beneath it moves. This resurgence has the potential to trigger additional volcanic activity and collapses. The Yellowstone caldera is a well-known resurgent caldera. Over the last two million years, it has gone through multiple cycles of eruption and uplift. Shield Volcano Calderas Shield Volcano Calderas arise on shield volcanoes, which are distinguished by their broad, gentle slopes built of low-viscosity basaltic lava. When the magma chamber beneath a shield volcano partially empties, the peak may collapse and form a caldera. Mauna Loa is the world's largest shield volcano, and Moku Aweoweo, the summit caldera, is a prime example. The caldera is approximately 6 kilometers 3.7 miles long and 3 kilometer 1.9 miles broad, and it was produced by the collapse of the peak during volcanic eruptions. 
As the pressure was relieved through these cracks, the dissolved gases would erupt, rapidly emptying the magma across the park. Volcanic ash and debris would be propelled several miles into the atmosphere, reaching heights greater than Mount Everest. A molten ash layer, around 10 feet thick, would extend up to 1,000 miles from the park, covering most of the Rocky Mountains and the Midwest, and stretching into the Pacific Northwest and Southern Canada. This dense and extensive ash would spare no life or structure within its range, leading to significant lahar flows and burying everything it reaches. Rescuers might have difficulty accessing the area because the ash blocks all entry points from the ground. Additionally, the ash and gases spreading into the atmosphere would likely disrupt most air travel, similar to the impact of a smaller volcano eruption in Iceland in 2010. The consequences following such an eruption extend well beyond the loss of human life. The large amount of ash expelled into the atmosphere would significantly affect air travel, affect air communication systems, and the overall infrastructure of the United States and parts of Canada. Globally, the aftermath would involve a layer of ash traveling across continents, reaching the UK within five days. This ash cloud, possibly ascending 25 miles high, would seriously affect air quality, leading to respiratory problems and health issues worldwide. The ash would also blanket the soil, disrupt machinery, and significantly impact food supplies by harming crops, resulting in substantial price hikes and a potential famine. The ash cloud could also be a barrier, blocking sunlight and decreasing global temperatures by 3 to 5 degrees Celsius. This substantial decrease could result in a regional or global volcanic winter, causing long-term changes in weather patterns. Crucial for maintaining the balance of our ecosystem, plant life would encounter a catastrophic hurdle. The thick layer of volcanic ash blocking sunlight would impede the process of photosynthesis and result in widespread plant mortality. This could lead to failures in worldwide crop production, disrupting the food chain and impacting species far from the initial eruption area. Water bodies would also be affected. Ash and other volcanic materials would enter rivers and lakes, impacting water quality and aquatic life. The sudden introduction of these materials could suffocate fish and other marine organisms, destabilizing freshwater ecosystems. The eruption of Pinatubo in 1991 caused the planet to cool by approximately 1 degree sas, 1.8 degree sas, for several years. The eruption of Tambora in 1815 caused enough cooling to harm crops globally, potentially causing famines in certain regions. These were relatively small eruptions compared to the potential capabilities of a supervolcano. Could a Yellowstone supereruption lead to an extinction-level event? The idea of such a catastrophic incident is disturbing, but a supervolcanic eruption at Yellowstone is not considered an extinction-level event, ELE. Even though such an eruption would have devastating outcomes with substantial local and possibly worldwide impacts, it would not lead to a mass extinction event or indicate the annihilation of the human species. Given the intricacy and seriousness of the potential eruption of the Yellowstone caldera, it is vital to comprehend its far-reaching implications. This geological occurrence possesses the power to significantly change life on our planet. Yellowstone Volcano Observatory YVO, oversees monitoring systems at Yellowstone. These systems observe seismic activity, ground deformation, and volcanic emissions to identify any indications of heightened volcanic activity in the Yellowstone region. This allows for timely monitoring and assessment of potential hazards, aiding in better comprehension and preparation for potential volcanic incidents. When is it expected to erupt again? Scientific knowledge assures us that although Yellowstone has not erupted in many thousands of years, the chances of such an event are slim. The underground magma chamber at Yellowstone consists mainly of solid rock, with only 5 to 15 percent in a molten state, indicating that there may not be enough magma to support another catastrophic supereruption. Experts clarify the misconception that Yellowstone is overdue for an eruption by emphasizing that volcanoes do not operate on fixed schedules and erupt when specific magma supply and pressure conditions are met. 
the USGS has indicated that it is very likely that Yellowstone will not experience an eruption for the next several centuries. The main hazards are expected to be ongoing geysers, earthquakes, and ground uplift. According to Lowenstern, Earth will experience super eruptions in the future, and it's uncertain whether they will occur in Yellowstone. He also states that Yellowstone has already had a long lifespan and may not have another eruption. Volcanoes eventually die out, and the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone is influenced by the heat from below and the relative cold from the surface. If less heat enters from below, the chamber could freeze and become a solid granite body. It's important to note that the volcanic hotspot beneath Yellowstone is gradually moving to the northeast, or more precisely, the North American tectonic plate above the hotspot is moving southwest. Thanks a lot for tuning in. If you like this video and want to see more similar content, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, share your thoughts in the comments section below.